Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on simple classification of substances and we're going to be looking at separating mixtures specifically. Previously we talked about separating um, liquid liquid mixtures but we looked at immiscible liquid liquid mixtures and we concluded that we are able to separate immiscible liquids using a separating panel. And the reason why it's possible to use this method is because they have different densities and also they're immiscible. So today we are going to still talk about liquid-liquid mixtures, but we are going to be discussing on uh, miscible liquids. Uh, these liquids can mix and we are going to use a process called fractional distillation. So you're going to look at the process uh, in details and also the apparatus that are used for this process. We are also going to look at some of the application of fractional distillation and then we are going to tackle one question uh, in regards to what you are going to discuss. So first, let's look at miscible liquids. Miscible liquids are liquids that usually mix completely. They can be separating, separated using fractional distillation. Uh, and the, the key thing to note with these liquids, they need to have different boiling points. They need to be different, but not only just different, but they also need to be close. If uh, these two liquids have different boiling points, but they are not close or they are further apart, this method is not going to be used. We are going to use a different method. So an example is a mixture of water and ethanol that we are going to use for this experiment. So if you mix water and ethanol, they are going to be miscible. And later on, we are going to discuss the boiling point of water and the boiling point of ethanol and see that difference. Are they close? Are they big? Is the difference big? Uh, so we are going to use this setup to uh, separate that mixture. So water and ethanol is placed in this round bottom flask, the mixture, and then it's heated. Heat is necessary for this reaction to occur. And then when the solution is heated, it rises up. So some of the solution evaporates and rises up to the fractionating column. In the fractionating column, we have some glass beads. These are basically small pieces of glasses that have been put in the column. We are going to discuss later the function of this fractionating column. And then uh, that also fumes passes the fractionating column. We have also a thermometer. We are going to see what is the function of this thermometer. And then the steam goes further into the Leibig condenser. This is an apparatus specifically made for fractional distillation. And you can note the spelling of Leibig condenser. Uh, we can call it Leibig condenser or Leibig condenser, depending on the person who taught you English. And then when you look at the Leibig condenser, we have a water in uh, place and also a water out place. We are going to see why it's uh, against the gravity and why not the other way around what is would happen if the water in water out was soaked so the fumes are collected after they condense they are collected you can see in this conical flask and the final product is usually called a distillate this comes from the word distillation so the product will be distillate so let's look at each and every apparatus and its function in the process so first of all, water and ethanol are miscible. We've already talked about them being miscible. They have different boiling points, different but close. These boiling points are close. So let's look at the boiling points. For ethanol, the boiling point is 78.2 degrees Celsius. And then for water is 100 degrees Celsius. You can see the difference is not that big. It's not a much big difference. They are close. Their boiling points are close. That is the reason why it is possible for us to use this method. And then we are also going to look at the purpose of each and every apparatus, starting with the fractionating column. So the fractionating column, the one that has glass beads, the fractionating column usually allows the water vapor to condense into a liquid and then it flows back into the flask. 
because the what the boiling point of water is not yet reached. So when you look at the boiling point of water and the boiling point of ethanol, when you start heating, ethanol will evaporate the first and also water some of the water will start evaporating. So when some of that water starts evaporating, and also we know that ethanol is also evaporating, so the water will condense and flow back, but for the ethanol, it will continue with the process of moving through the apparatus. So you can see how important this fractionating column is. It allows the water to flow back. Otherwise, we would collect a mixture of ethanol and water. The next uh, ex uh, explanation is that when we heat, ethanol is the one that boils fast, just like we have discussed. It boils fast because it has a lower, a lower boiling point. And then it is collected fast. So we said some of the water might evaporate, but when they get to the fractionating column, they go back. They go back into the round bottom flask. And then remember we had a, a thermometer. The thermometer helps us to know uh, if the boiling point of ethanol has reached. We are able to measure the temperature of the fumes that are being produced. So when uh, it starts evaporating, it stays constant. Uh, remember we talked about this when we were talking about kinetic theory and we said that the boiling point A is constant. So it stays in the same temperature until all of the ethanol evaporates. So it, that's why we, we call it a boiling point. It is very constant. Then another apparatus we noticed was the glass bits that were in the fractional fractionating column. These glass beads actually help in increasing the surface area for condensation. We say that the water is condensing and going back to the flask. What helps in this faster condensation is the glass beads inside the fractionating column. We also noticed that we have a labic condenser that has water in, water out system. So this labic condenser uses counterflow principle to cool off. So the vapors are moving in one direction while the water is moving in another direction. It moves like that. So there is a counterflow principle. They move in different directions. The vapor is moving in the uh, forward direction while the water is moving in the back direction. This helps in condensation. It helps to condense the water vapor or the whatever vapor is being uh, condensed efficiently. So going back to our apparatus, we talked about the water in and water out being uh, completely opposite the gravity. Normally gravity, you'd think the water should come from up and then go, uh, go from downwards. But the water is going in an opposite direction or opposite to the gravity. The reason why this is being done so in Levy Condenser is to give the water enough time the water will move very slowly along the Leibig condenser. This slowness allows efficient cooling or condensation. If the water moved very fast, then condensation would happen, but not efficiently. So the fact that it's moving slowly because it's going, it's trying to go against the gravity, it allows for condensation to happen efficiently. In case we swapped the water in, water out, and went according to gravity, condensation still would happen, but it is not efficient. It's not efficient. So that's the reason why the water in, water out must go against the gravity. So next, you're going to look at some of the applications of um, fractional distillation. And we have two applications. One of the applications we are going to discuss later on uh, in air and combustion, which is the manufacture of oxygen and nitrogen. And we call it fractional distillation of liquefied air. Fractional distillation of liquefied air.
So we are going to liquefy air and then also use structural distillation to separate different components. We are going to discuss that later. Another application is the distillation of crude well, which you're going to look at later in form three. Uh, so we take crude well and then it's heated and different fractions are extracted, examples like diesel, petroleum, cooking gas. These are just fractions which have different boiling points. So they are able to be extracted. So these are the two major applications of fractional distillation. Next, we are going to look at a question uh, in regards to what we have discussed. So a Form 1 student crushed banana leaves with water and left the mixture for some days. He found that the mixture had fermented. He suspected that the mixture had been contaminated with ethanol, which has a boiling point of 78, 78 degrees Celsius, while water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. The student then set up the apparatus below to separate the mixture. So this, this contamination or the fermentation produces ethanol. So we have a mixture of ethanol and water in these um, crushed bananas. So he, he placed, that student placed the mixture in the round bottom flask and heated. So we know the process is going to heat and the, and the uh, vapors are going to get up in the fractionating column and then they are going to be condensed and we're going to collect our distillate. So let's look at the question. Name apparatus labeled B. So apparatus labeled B, we said is Leibig condenser. And then uh, the next question is, what is the purpose of the thermometer in the setup? The thermometer is used to measure the temperature of the vapors produced. And then the next question is, at what point of apparatus B should the tap water be connected? Explain. So we said the tap goes against the gravity. So the water in tap will be at point C, and then the water out will be at point D. So it's going against the gravity. We said the reason why it's so, it's because it increases or it makes condensation efficient. Condensation efficient. And then uh, we got the next question, name the part labeled A and state its function. So label A is fractionating column. And we said the purpose of the fractionating column is to condense, in this case is water, because uh, water is going to evaporate some of it. So it will condense the water vapor and the water vapor, vapor flows back into the round bottom plus. That is its function. If we had the glass bit inside the fractionating column, you can also be asked to state its use, which is to increase the surface area for condensation of the vapors. Next question is, which liquid was collected first? So in comparison to ethanol, which is 78 degrees Celsius, and water, which is 100, you pick the lowest boiling point. So in this case, the one that was collected, the first was ethanol. And the reason why is because it has a lower boiling point in comparison to water. And then uh, what is the name given to the above method of separating mixtures? So we call this method fractional distillation. And then finally, what property of the component of the mixture makes it possible for the components to be separated by this method? We said there are two things. First, they have different boiling points, but close. Different, but close boiling points. And that brings us to the end of the question and also the end of what we have been discussing. So I hope you can, I, I hope you can be able to explain this process well, uh, each step and also each apparatus, its function and what is the property uh, that is used for this method. So see you in the next lesson.